If you are Star Citizen fan, you're probably wondering, will you be able to run Starfield on your PC? When the disappointment news came out that Starfield is limited to 30 FPS on the Xbox Series X and S, I had to take a look at what that will indicate for PC players who will play the PC release. Will we have the same performance issues that is plaguing Star Citizen in Starfield? To set the stage, let's take a look at how Starfield actually performed on the Xbox Box showcase. In the demo, IGN was able to measure that Starfield dropped to 20 FPS during tight firefights. And according to IGN, their educated guess was that it's a GPU-bound moment due to the memory bandwidth. I would, however, argue that they're wrong, because the Xbox Series X hardware specs are equivalent to AMD Zen 2 chip, 8 cores running at 3.6 GHz when the SMT is on. A PC processor that will deliver comparable performance would be the Ryzen 3700X. And on the graphics card, the Series X, use a custom AMD R&D 2 GPU with 50 compute units running at 1.8 to 5 gigahertz. On the PC side, a graphics card like this would be the NVIDIA 3070 Ti. On the AMD side, it would actually be a GPU that's in between the RX 6700 XT and the RX 6800. And now we can see the problem. It's the CPU that is holding Starfield back. I know this for certain because the 3000 series just simply don't run that well in Star Citizen. Now I know you might be saying Star Citizen and Starfield is slightly different but if we can see the performance in Star Citizen and see the performance in Starfield with the Xbox Series X we can simply deduct that they perform within the same range because the performance of the 3700 in Star Citizen is actually within the range of Starfield. You get the dips into the 20s and the average between 30 to 40 FPS. If you are not convinced, take a look at the system requirements for Starfield. The system requirements are very similar to the PC version of the Xbox Series X. A 3600X rather than a 3700X. That is two less cores. And the RX 6800X. Essentially what Bethesda is recommending is a similar specs as the Series X. Which simply means that the recommended specs is simply for running the game in 1440p at roughly 30 to 40 fps on average with the 1% low dipping into 20s. Well, you might say shouldn't the recommended be for 60 fps? Yes, most of the time it should be for 60 fps. But think about the reason why this would be for 30 plus fps. If it was at 60, then everybody would be complaining even louder why the Series X is not running at 60 fps. When it has similar specifications as the recommended system specs for Starfield. After all, this is a Xbox flagship title positioned to acquire more users to buy the Xbox platform. So prediction number one, Starfield's recommended PC specs just comes with the benefit that there is no frame cap and you'll be seeing 30 to 40 FPS on average with 1% lows in the 20s. So if you have a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor, the performance will be much smoother than the Xbox Series X. So moving on to analysis number Number two, AMD is f lying and anti-consumer. They bought the exclusive rights to be Starfield's exclusive PC partner. And as such, they're locking out Bethesda from implementing NVIDIA's DLLS, which is a superior upscaling technology. However, according to an early modder who got early access, they believe they're gonna be able to implement DLSS in Starfield through a mod. Taking a look at the recommended specs, it seems like something is at play. The recommendation shows inferior NVIDIA GPUs up against AMD's GPUs. The 6800 XT is roughly 50% faster than the 2080. Why would the AMD recommended specs be much higher than the NVIDIA ones? Well, I believe this is because AMD just want to show that quote-unquote NVIDIA isn't performing as well as AMD, appearing a weak 
weaker GPU against a more powerful AMD GPU. After all, mainstream reviewers might actually pair both GPUs up against each other in their own benchmarking tests. Is this what Jack Hinn, the senior vice president and general manager for AMD, mean by we have worked hand in hand with Bethesda Game Studios to optimize Starfield? In other words, optimizing the recommended specs to make AMD's GPUs look more powerful compared to Nvidia's? Or are they self-admitting that the 6800XT will not perform that well? And as such, the 7000 series will not perform that well either. Well, I don't think so, especially when AMD partnered with Bethesda for this game. Therefore, ultimately, I think AMD is lying about Nvidia's recommended system specs. In reality, it should be much higher, like a decently overclocked 3070 Ti. And finally, they are being anti-consumer when it comes to locking out DLSS. Moving on to analysis number three. What will be required to play Starfield in a comfortable 60 FPS? Just like Star Citizen, the 5800X3 will be a very comparable CPU that can perform in the 60 to 70 FPS range just like the way it performs in Star Citizen. And just like my other benchmarks, this CPU will also benefit from memory overclocking. You will see these benefits in the 1% lows and average. I know this because just like Star Citizen, Starfield requires an SSD to perform well. This is because Starfield uses a streaming tech which puts a lot of stress on the memory. Therefore, you need to have high bandwidth but also low latency for the game to run smoothly. Don't take my word for it, try to play Star Citizen with a hard drive. So even though Star Citizen and Starfield are two completely games, they share a similar archetype in what they're trying to achieve. One, they both simulate background information. Starfield simulates it on your local machine. Meanwhile, Star Citizen simulates it on the servers and push it to your PC to finally unpack it. They both have persistent. Meanwhile, Star Citizen backs it up with their servers. Starfield has to obviously keep it on the local PC. They both use procedural tech that requires streaming from the SSD, which like I said before, puts a lot of strain on the memory and CPU. They both use a form of subsumption AI, where NPCs can change the behavior based on what you have done to the game world. Most of this will be calculated in the future by Quanta. Meanwhile, Starfield is calculating this locally on your machine. But while the game archetypes are very similar, I can't believe I get to stand near you, breathing the same air. I've got to have every molecule. Star Citizen main difference here is that they tend to offload a lot of the simulations and calculations that are related to server-wide activities to the server. Meanwhile, obviously Starfield is doing a lot of this work on the local machine. This is why there are probably equally amount of resource intense. So what this means, if you want that over 90 FPS, you will be looking at having the 7800X3, but also the Intel 1300K fully tuned and fully overclocked. From all of this analysis, we can confidently conclude that Starfield will be very, very demanding, just like Star Citizen. And the advice you see in this channel in terms of overclocking and tuning your PC will be very, very much relevant to Starfield as well. So what this means for my channel is that I will start to include Starfield benchmark when the game gets released in September. The benefit of doing Starfield benchmarks is that I don't need to do five runs for Starfield because it's a single player game. This doesn't mean I'm going to stop benchmarking Star Citizen, absolutely not. This is a Star Citizen channel first. I will continue doing Star Citizen but with an addition of adding Starfield because I'm very confident just like Star Citizen there will be a ton of forum posts of gamers complaining that the game is unoptimized and it's my duty to tell you the only thing unoptimized is your PC.